like it looks like a spring all wound up. Uh, do the negative 7 pi over 2 on your own. Of course, you know this is 0 and 2 pi. It's already broken up into pi over 2's for you. That's kind of nice. Well, let's see where we end up. Okay, we'll start our initial side. Negative, I know that means we're going, we're going clockwise. I'm going to count 7 pi over 2 is going <coughs> clockwise. That's what our negative says. So here's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I know we're... <coughs> that is our terminal side. We've just gone around <coughs> time and a quarter. Or time and three quarters. How many people were able to end with, with exactly that? Cool. Are there any questions so far before we continue on to some actual trig functions? We're going to put this stuff together now. No? Yes? You all right so far? Yeah. All right, good. Now, of course, somebody went and said, how can we relate the sides of a right triangle and a unit circle along with their angles? And so we, we have our unit circle up here. And if we were to make a right triangle out of it, it's a horrible right triangle. There we go. If we consider the point x, y, with any, we're, we're being general here, so we have any coordinates. How far along is this right here? <coughs> Whatever the x is, sure, okay. And, and how far is this right here? And if I say the unit circle, how far is the hypotenuse in this case? Good, that's what's, what's a unit circle. Unit circle says it has a radius of 1. What we do, what someone did a long time ago is they said, okay, we want to somehow represent the sides of a right triangle and call them something. We want to call the ratios of our sides of a right triangle some function, some trigonometric <coughs> function. So if we have any sort of angle in a right triangle, just like we have right here, and of course you know that's a hypotenuse, and we call this, is, is this the opposite of the adjacent? Okay, and this is the adjacent side. We had a few trig functions. Let me be real clear before we go any further. The stuff that says sine, cosine, tangent, th those are functions. Okay, you you can't you can't compute those. Th those aren't a, those aren't a number. Uh, you can't ever just have a Say, I'm going to take sine. Sine by itself doesn't mean anything. Sine has to have some sort of expression of an angle inside of it. If we just say, can you take sine squared plus cosine squared? No, you can't. That doesn't mean anything. That, that This is not equal to 1 because you don't have any angle here. You have to have exactly the same angle for that to be equal to 1. You have to have those angles in there for identities to work, for you to do the computations with them. So if you ever find yourself writing sine and cosine without any inside part, you're probably making a little mistake. Be real careful that sine and cosine have, and tangent and all these trig functions have to be associated with some sort of an angle. Am I getting that across to you? These are functions just based on that angle. Without that, that doesn't make any sense. Okay, now let's go back to this. Let's review. What is sine exactly? It's a relationship between which two sides? Good. Have you ever heard of Chief Soka Towa? <laughs> no? Maybe in high school, Chief Soka Towa, he asks you if you get this wrong. <laughs> I'm going to ask you a question. <laughs> um, yeah, Soka Towa says sine is opposite over hypotenuse. 
And cosine is what? So ka. Okay, and tangent. What's tangent? For sure. We also get <coughs> cosecant. You know, I'm going to run down here so you see a little bit. The cosecant, the secant, and the cotangent. They're just the reciprocals of the original three tree functions that we have. So, which one goes with uh, the cosine? Which one is the, the reciprocal of our cosine? Yeah, the secant is. So here, this isn't adjacent over hypotenuse, it's hypotenuse over adjacent. Well, cotangent goes with tangent. That's going to be your adjacent over opposite. And the cosecant, that's the, the reciprocal of our sine. So you're going to get the hypotenuse over the opposite. Well, if we apply this idea of a basic right triangle to the unit circle, we actually get ways to compute the sine, the cosine, and the tangent, and, and, and all these, these, uh, these are circles, cosecant, secant, cotangent, of any point that we have, provided we can find the x and the y coordinate. You see, when we, when we apply this, if we look at the sine of this particular angle, Look at your angle. Tell me what sine is. Sine should be opposite over hypotenuse, right? That's what we define it as over here. What's the opposite to my angle? What's the opposite to my angle? What is it? One. Oh, one. Why? Oh, I thought you said one. It's like, wait a second. We got to review some trigonometry a little bit here. Opposite. Okay, opposite is y over what? Sure. How much is y over one? Yeah, that's why we get on the unit circle that the y coordinate for that point is sine of that particular angle. That's why we get that. It's our it's our definition now. <coughs> so sine equals y. Cosine. Cosine should be adjacent over hypotenuse, so the adjacent of our angle is x. The hypotenuse, well, well that's 1. So we're going to get x over 1 or x. That's why on the unit circle when you see a coordinate point, x comma y, you know cosine comes first and sine comes second because we know that the cosine of that angle is the x. It's that distance which is how we correlate that to any point. So we go, oh yeah, okay, the, the x coordinate, that means the cosine of that angle. The y coordinate, that means the sine of that angle. That's kind of neat, right? It's the way we, we, can, we combine the idea of a unit circle in our, our trigonometry. Tangent. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, so in our case, that's the y over the x. Which also leads us to our identity. If you look at that, what, how much is equal to y over here? Sine. How much is equal to x? You can say it out loud. It's okay to talk in this class. How much is x? If we know that tangent is y over x, y equals sine and cosine equals x, then this also leads to sine over cosine, right? So we get our first identity, tangent equals sine over cosine. That's pretty easy to see. Not too bad. Now, you can also do this with our, um, with our reciprocals here. Instead of opposite over hypotenuse, as far as a unit circle goes, we get cosecant, we get secant, and we get cotangent. They're just the reciprocals of our identities here. So if sine is y, cosecant is 1 over y. If cosine is x, secant is 1 over x. Tangent is y over x, cotangent is x over y. By the way, I would like you to do this. Go, go in your book and read, not right now, go in your book and read through, uh, I think it's around page 30 through 35, somewhere in there, they have a listing of common angles that we use. It's going to really be helpful to you if I can say to you, uh, give me cosine of, uh, of pi over 3, and you're able to do it. 
give me cosine of, of pi over 2, I mean at least. Give me, give me sine of pi over 4, things like that. It's going to help you a little bit. So refresh your memory on that. If you need to use a circle right now for your homework, great. But I want you to get kind of in the habit of knowing those by heart or by, by memory. Can you guys do that for me? At least look them over. Don't go in this class without knowing at least what I'm talking about, okay? Knowing that those exist and, and how to at least find them. Try to memorize the unit circle then. In your head. Got it. Are you guys familiar with what happens to, to sine, cosine, and tangent as we go around the quadrants? Do you guys know what happens with that? So, for instance, uh, I know that there are four quadrants to any x, y axis or coordinate system. And this is quadrant, what was this quadrant? Uh -huh. And which one's two, left or down? Left. Good. And so that means that's three and this one's four. We use Roman numerals because, well, I have no idea, we just do. So Roman numerals, that's how we got it, one, two, three, four. Are you familiar with what is positive in which quadrant? All students take calculus. All, all, wait, all students take calculus? Yeah. Oh. I always thought it was astrology sucks total crap, but I could do it. <laughs> no, just kidding. Yeah, all students take calculus as a mnemonic to remember that in the quadrants, certain, certain trig functions have certain values. For instance, A means all the trig functions are positive right here. All the trig functions are positive in the first quadrant. <coughs> students means sign is positive in the second quadrant. What that also means is that cosecant is positive. All students take, so tangent in the third, that means cotangent as well. And last one is cosine or secant. So all students Take that's not true though. We gotta find something that's true. We gotta find. Think of a better mnemonic for me. <laughs> like uh, try calculus. Try cal. Oh, okay, that was original. Good. <laughs> <laughs> How about uh, the acronym surrounding this class? I like that. Yeah, that's that's very okay. Well, you come with something better. Anyway, all students take calculus works just fine. Tells you what's positive in which quadrant. Now, one way that we can use this, and you didn't know, you're like, oh, why do we even know, we need to know that all students take calculus or know the values of those quadrants? Is we can find out the trig function for any angle using an idea called reference angles in combination with the ASTC, uh, knowing the quadrants. Let me show. Would you like to see how that's done? Let me show you how that's done. So we're going to talk about reference angles just briefly, then I'll show you how to combine the idea of reference angles with the idea of this, or knowing our quadrants, to determine the trig function and its value for any angle that I give you. Provided you know the unit circle. Okay, that's a must. So reference angles. Uh, how to find trig function in any angle is, is what this is. And the idea is, is this. What we're going to do is we're going to try to make an acute angle with the x-axis. And then we're going to use the, find the trig function of that. And then use the ASTC idea. 